A lot of people don't know my dad's background. I mean, everybody has their own story, but a lot of people in the industry come from money or their dad was a racer or family stuff. It's He lived in Toledo, Ohio, grew up there, born and raised. Small family, didn't have two nickels to rub together. And on his uh, 19th birthday, just seeing ads in a magazine, saw Cal Wells' PPI shop and was like, I want to work there. Cal and I get this letter from a guy back in Toledo, Ohio, has his summer off, wants to come work for a week or 10 days for free. He'll pay us all his expenses. Can he come just hang out and do whatever we ask him to do? And we kind of look at each other and go, sure, okay. So he gets out there and, you know, he sweeps the floors, does cleanup, helps with this, helps with that, and just all around good guy, no problems. And um, his time was up and we're getting ready to say goodbye. And he goes, well, would you guys consider hiring me? Cal and I kind of look at each other and go, Sure. And so little did we know the monster that we were gonna create. And he went on to be one of our toughest competitor builders in off-road. It was cool that Tom Morris was actually my boss out in the shop. It had a lot of mutual respect to where he saw that I had some talent and he would let me keep progressing. He didn't say stand in the corner and just do your little job. He's like, hey, can you do this? We need somebody to I ended up for the first Toyotas, I actually sculpted the front half of the body because they said, can you do that? And I said, sure. And it was neat to have, a, have somebody trust you and, and say, go for it, be creative. And that's what I came for. It was a nice kid, very quiet, wasn't a mixer, not a popcorn machine, Russ. A couple of races through, Russ's truck starts doing better. It's the Time Rider truck with Michael Nesmith and all the PPI cars were involved. Russ comes to me one day in the shop uh, and says, hey, listen, you know, he says, uh, this truck that I work on is just as good as all the rest of those trucks, and I'm not getting what I need to get out of the pitting. You gotta change that. And I thought, my first reaction was, <laughs> and my next reaction was, he's right. He's right, who is this guy? We made changes, they did better, uh, it was all over there. And over that period of time, I got to knowing Russ, and Russ, I didn't realize this, got to know me. Russ Wernemont was one of the leading builders who took us from class eight, which were relatively stock vehicles with stock frame rails, to full on race vehicles with tube chassis, leading us into the modern era of off-road racing we have today. It's pretty amazing that he had the vision that trucks could even perform at this level. Where he really cut his teeth was uh, Scott Taylor and the dominance in short course racing the East Coast. And literally he'd go out and help build the truck with Scott and uh, come up with different ideas and thoughts. And a lot of them would get outlawed because Scott would keep winning. So it's like, all right, well, it can't be a center seat car anymore because that's why he's winning. No, Scott just drives well. They built a good truck. They had some good ideas and they, kick people's butts. Taylor, he is way out in front. Nobody's going to catch him. He's not going to make a mistake. Way too much experience there. It was Russ's idea. It was a challenge to get me over a transmission and make a seat and, and get my legs down and have two brake pedals and a gas pedal. At first, you want to use the right foot braking and you, there's a big hump right here. You couldn't do it. And but it was a phenomenal race car. It was very fast. Russ built it in a way that where it would break if it ever broke. And we broke it one time at Bark River doing the launch, the 193 feet. And I landed on the back bumper and it broke right where it was supposed to break. But that was a real unique race truck. That was a lot of fun. Very simple, very practical, and it worked. Right up to the very end when I retired, Russ was 100% always all on Sleeping is not an option if the race car is not ready to go. I mean, he was just a dedicated guy and still is. He's now working with his son with Kawasaki in the desert on the UTV stuff. And he is, he's going to put uh, his son at the top, just like he did me. Russ had built this Pro 4 for me and he never built a Pro 4. And anyway, we took it out to the first couple races and and it was real fast. He watched it here at Crand, and once it got rotated, it was fast out of the corners, it was great. But he had done some pretty crazy stuff, unconventional, you know, but that's Russ's style. Went up to him, he was watching it, he was pitting, or he was crew chief for Scott Taylor at the time. I says, well, what do you think? What's, what's the deal, and what do you think about it? And he goes, yeah, I, I see it, and yeah, there's a problem. And, and uh, 
I says, well, what can we do? What can we change? Tell us, you know? And he says, you guys can't do anything. He says, I, I got to cut it up. And I go, cut it up? Cut what up? And he says, the truck. And, and uh, so we put it in the semi, put it in the wind uh, to California from Crandon here, drove straight through. He worked and did a few adjustments on where the A-arms were, where the pivots were, and, and a few other things. And uh, got it turned around brought it back a week later directly to a race and went out and won it just and, and then from there on out we were dominant with that truck and we ended up winning the championship but we uh we were able to pull it off with one of russ's chassis and that was his first four-wheel drive he ever built when he would be designing for example the, the class 8 venable truck i watched him doing this I, I mean it's not a story he would cut out 100 pound stock cardstock into the shapes of whatever suspension thing he was working on and a map tack he put the map tack in there where he figured the pivot point ought to be and he for a few minutes. Ah, move it. Oh yeah. Those small things, I don't know if he taught the industry or showed the industry. You know, you can do it if you can think it. And that was Russ Winnemar. And he thought of a lot. Right behind Ivan comes the second place truck. This is Paul Simon at the wheel. You do this because you're driven by passion. You don't do this because you want to make a bunch of money. He was a passion-driven person that he wanted to win more than he wanted to, to sleep or eat or anything else. That's exactly who my dad is. Winning is number one. He doesn't care about nothing else. In Venable's car, we had an arrangement. He would take the start. He hated riding in a race car. And we finished, we drove the rest of the night, and about dawn, we were coming through Olds Negros, and Russ finished the truck. And when we got across that finish line, he had such a, you know, man, we made it. He, he hates racing, he hates doing that stuff. Well, I had in my pocket the whole time the biggest Snickers bar you could ever find. Handed it to him in his driver's seat, and you know, he lit up like a Christmas tree. And so I have another Snickers bar for him, and I'm going to make sure he has one before he gets completely inducted into the Hall of Fame.